I sold off a lot of real estate over the last 24 months, uh, commercial real estate for various reasons that went to cash. And when I called the cash desk, they offered me 22 basis points. And that's the journey I took into crypto. I'm now using stable coins um, with a company called Circle and USDC to actually stake stable coins in 30, 60, 90 day contracts. And I'm getting about 6.5%. So at least I'm holding my own against inflation. Uh, but that is a cryptocurrency and it's not regulated yet. So I don't expect many corporate institutions would do the same thing. Uh, it took me six months to get my auditors to sign my statements on this, and they only allowed me to treat it as if it was equity. So I can only have up to 5% in any one mandate in, in stablecoin or any crypto. So there's a lot of moving parts here. Cash is not a good place to be. Um, you know, people debate it all the time. But you are really getting taxed uh, at a huge rate with cash right now. Just, just a question for you, just purely educational. If there is this uh, a crackdown uh, and more legislation coming towards Bitcoin mining, uh, how would this impact price, Kevin? Would it? I don't think it would affect price. Um, the, they're, they're, Bitcoin will be mined in perpetuity somewhere, and there'll be these coins awarded into pools. What's going to affect price and why I'm long Bitcoin and why I'm investing all this time and money in, in, in these facilities where I have direct ownership is at some point in the next two to three years, the U.S. regulator is going to rule on cryptocurrencies and they will rule first on stable coins and Bitcoin itself and Ethereum and, and the, the, the very large assets by market cap. As soon as that happens, if I'm running a sovereign fund or a you know, pension plan, I'm going to allocate to it probably one to three percent. And I want to be long Bitcoin when that happens. Because you want to talk about Bitcoin going to 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, it's going to be when institutions can finally buy it. Because I can tell you with certainty right now, because I, I service sovereign wealth funds and pension plans in, in, in the indexing business, for all of the hype around Bitcoin, none of those institutions own a single coin. And, and, the, and, and, you know, they're not going to until their compliance departments allow for the ESG mandates to be check the box on that. And of course, be compliant on the asset class itself. But when they do get that go ahead, the price of the coin is going to appreciate dramatically. And remember, the way to think about Bitcoin, it's not a coin, it's software. And so it, it's software. So if, if you think about it, Bitcoin being software, which is what it is, and you and these institutions own Microsoft, they own Google, that's all software too. So it's very easy for them to get their heads around it as soon yeah. as it's compliant. They'll buy one to 3%, and that's when the price is going to appreciate. And I, I think that's going to happen in the next, you know, two to three years. No, thanks for answering that, because I was wondering, are guys like Michael Saylor sweating with, um, with uh, you know, the crackdown coming on, on Bitcoin mining? So... That was but but I, he should be concerned. He should be dumping his shares in the dirty miners and, and redeploying it in the clean miners long before the regulator regulates. Many institutions are not allowed to own Bitcoin. That's well known because it just hasn't been ruled by the regulator yet. So as a proxy to getting exposure to Bitcoin, they buy the equities of public Bitcoin mining companies, Marathon, Riot, etc., these companies uh, mine the Bitcoin and keep the majority of them on the balance sheet. So as time passes, more and more assets go on the balance sheet and it trades with the volatility of Bitcoin. You can watch these stocks go up and down almost in complete proxy to Bitcoin. However, recently, because of primarily the Larry Fink ESG mandate that came out of BlackRock, the largest money manager on earth, the number one manager of sovereign wealth and pension plans, BlackRock said, look, Here's how we feel about this. You have to have an ESG sustainability mandate. And that includes a mandate that can be audited. So the, 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 the Bitcoin mining industry started buying carbon credits to try and make them look like they're green, but it's completely unaudible. The, 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 you, you don't know, you know where the electricity is that you're, you're using. Did it, was it made with burning gas? Was it made with burning coal? And how much should you buy in carbon credits? And the tracking error is huge. So if you were to audit one of those companies, they're going to be way offside. And, and so what I've been doing is selling marathons, selling riots, selling all of these public mining companies, because I know this is coming. It's going to hit them this year and they are going to get crushed because all of their institutional following is going to leave. The solution is emerging in countries like Canada, 
Norway, even in upstate New York and West Texas, where these new generation miners, these new companies are setting up mining operations beside hydroelectric, wind, power, and nuclear. And the reason they're doing that is there's no carbon in that equation. They don't have to get auto, they don't have to buy carbon credits. They don't have to worry about it at all. And they're doing the same thing. So I took the capital that I made by selling all those dirty miners, if you want to call them that, and I put it into these new companies that are that can show me that their, their facility is being built in Norway. And that's one of the biggest projects right now. Um, th this is really important because now I know with certainty that every coin I own is mined sustainably, not using carbon at all, doesn't need to have a carbon credit. The government there supports the activity. In this case in Norway, it's in a town with 3,000 people. Many of them work at the facility and this miner. And this is the new story that's going to have to emerge to offset policy changes at the, at the federal level uh, domestically and in other countries. We are using the heat from the stacks to grow hydroponic vegetables for the village and helping fish spawn with a rookery that we're also supporting. So that's how you integrate in with society. That's how you become a good corporate citizen. That's how you stay compliant with the ESG mandates. That's how you're going to um, mine Bitcoin. So if, if I were an institution now, I would, I would be very careful in what Bitcoin mining stocks I own. Stay out of the dirty miners. If they say to you they're buying carbon credits, run for the hills. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.